Uh, my name is Peter Allenbein. Uh, I love to be on this podium here for this uh, interesting, interesting discussion that uh, we are on and on this interesting topic. I have got to know Uwe through Dagma only lately, unfortunately. I didn't know about him before that. And uh, when I saw the pictures and the paintings, I was amazed about sort of the cosmic fluidity in it, about the sort of imprintments uh, between the organic and the virtual. Uh, I was also impressed by the stars, stars and eyes. Uh, eyes and stars go together. He painted a series of stars and which are sort of like looking eyes onto you. And um, since I'm coming from an intercultural background uh, and on the background of this theoretical stuff is this eminent uh, scholar and uh, eminent mystic, Ken Wilber, I would have liked to see them both together, the artist and this philosopher, Ken Wilber. I would like to ask somebody here who is from the US, does anybody know, has ever heard of Ken Wilber? No. Ken Wilber is American. I think he's the utmost genius in the question of bridging uh, science and humanities, and especially spirituality. And uh, he, he started uh, as 23rd coming out with two books with really revolutionized um, the, the background of today's uh, necessary overcoming personal views into transpersonal views with two books. The first was called Up From Eden uh, and um, A Transpersonal View on Evolution. And the second book was called Spectrum of Consciousness. And there we are right in the middle of what um, connects uh, Wilbur to Ube. Ube was saying, in, as far as I can, and you mentioned it already, that um, when the universe is really an expanding one, um, then we all are linked together with the whole cosmos and that, what does it mean that the evolution of consciousness, in which way does it connect to God or something similar to be called like that? That was the main question of Ken Wilber that he asked himself, what in today's world is the connecting principle between uh, a spiritual world and a, and a scientific world world of matter and non-matter. So he was exploring these sort of um, edges between spirituality and science, and he started to explore it through the Eastern wisdom. And what he wanted to bring together, together is Eastern wisdom and Western science, and the brilliancy of both. And Eastern wisdom meant Indian Buddhist teaching, Indian Hindu teachings, uh, Near East Eastern uh, spirituality that sort of would include Christianity also. And uh, with the latest ideas of quantum physics, of a Heisenberg, of Einstein, and so on. Understanding that we are always, today more than ever via internet, that we are always walking between the visibility and the invisibility. I have much worked with dance. I've understood for, since then how much the body is not just a sort of um, a matter thing that you can touch and you feel pain or, or lust or uh, whatever, but that it is a fluidity that is going from, from pure gravity into something sort of an invisible um, aura of, of uh, energy where you feel it's not the dancer that you see, but you see that aura uh, of the dance that is sort of exposed by the dancer. And what you see in between all the time is, and that connects the two of these people again, is space. Not seeing space with your visible eyes, but seeing space in the sense of experiencing and touching this emptiness. So the forward word in Wilbur's terminology is the question of emptiness in form. Matter and energy, matter and information, 
matter and the abyss of so-called nothingness and allness, the wholeness of everything. And um, his whole work is circling around the question how the two, how this universe is sort of or ordered in between these huge continents of matter and non-matter and is always spiraling through sort of a series of level and stages uh, between these two poles. Um, Ube sort of in his work shows us all the time and in the film also he, I mean he, they try to, to show it, this fluidity of consciousness. The evolution of consciousness is a fluid form that is developing itself more and more into broader and deeper uh, sort of um, dimension and realms of understanding. And, and here comes Wilbur into it also again, this understanding is never the end, so to say. It is always sort of projecting, projecting behind a background of emptiness that is always empty and more empty and sort of um, brings up new sort of matter, new sort of information, new sort of science that sort of tries to connect to this emptiness. Um, all, all religion is especially about symbolism. And as you know, we have so many symbolism. We have the Buddhist, uh, the Buddhist sort of nirvana, the emptiness in, in itself. We have the Christian cross. We have uh, the, the Chinese, Tai Chi symbol yin and yang where the one goes into the flues into the other. Um, so the, the idea was always embrace one. Try to get to the heart of everything that matters, of everything that matters. And within this heart, there's the explosion into the unknown. And the unknown remains the unknown. One of Wilbur's sort of uh, real um, discoveries was that uh, what he called the transpersonal understanding of reality, which he calls integral, integral, a kind of visionary logic, where you not only have a sort of um, a mindset of fixed ideas, sondern a real sort of, yeah, schauen, wie sagt man? Schauen, das Ger the German word schauen into English, a vision logic where you see, hear, and perceive at the same time the different states of reality flowing into each other most of the time. As he was a meditative person, he understood the three principles that also sort of I found in Ube's work, the principles that he says you can see with the eyes of the flesh, that is with the body. You know? Science is still on body. You need sort of uh, telescopes and you need an internet also. We need all these kind of stuff here in order to uh, let things happen. You see with the eyes of mind, he says, a second part, which is the philosophy, the psychology, and you see with the eye of spirit. And the eye of spirit doesn't see what the eyes of the flesh see and doesn't see what the eyes of the mind see. So there are different universes. It's like when Ube first, yeah, you, you see a star. Okay, it's a star. And then you suddenly perhaps see the eye in the star. And if you even look, go deeper, you see within the eye, as we all have in our own eyes, these deep, dark point where everything sort of goes through and sort of is projected on your neural system just the other way around. And so far, reality uh, seen through the arts, in a way, comes very close to what is we sort of discover through the uh, new physics of Einstein, of Heisenberg quantum physics, that we see matter is just the starting point of movements into the unknown again and again. Wilbur was clear about one fact. Technology is a wonderful and nece uh, necessary instrument, but never the solution for nothing. It is a so-called um, uh, 
Well, um, probably many people of you have seen this wonderful film, um, Odyssey in Space, 2001, this film by Stanley Kubrick, and there is this incredible transformational aspect in it that uh, two, two groups of um, apes, apes, yeah, are sort of battling each other, and then some takes a, a bone in order to kill the other, and that bone, instead of gravity falling down, uh, he, he lets it out of his hand. It is sort of moving up into space. So, and then the first spaceship there, and the music is a waltz theme, so we have this spiraling movement, and uh, what do we have? We have an absolutely developed uh, technology, and on the other hand, this technology nowadays turns into, again, a very difficult matter of death and life, as we can develop drones nowadays. Something that comes from behind you, from somewhere out of nowhere, and kills people right on the street or wherever. So technology remains, whether it's internet or whatever, in Wilbur's, and not only Wilbur's, um, awareness, a double sword, a, a thought with a double edge. Exactly. Thank you very much. Um, we get man here. Uh, ah, yeah, I came. Uh, yeah. Y y well, this is in German. It means body, it means uh, sort of the mind, it means soul, and it means spirit. You can see that. So we were thought in not, not directly in circles, but in, in spiraling circles. That means in spirals, then expand the universe and in sort of um, in sp expanding and what do you call it? Contracting. Huh? Contracting universe, right? All the time in movement. So we have not a body and then we have uh, uh, a mind or so, but everything flowing into each other. Um, and as he said, everything is connected to everybody and Ube is working on this. Everything is connected to, to everything. Does that mean we have just a mixture of everything? No, we do not have just a, what was it? Uh, yeah, but we have a complex system, and Wilbur did as what Ube wanted probably, to really do research work on how is the mind, how is the eye working, that he put up uh, a, four, a map of consciousness, he called it, a map of an evolutionary consciousness, and up there you have the I, the Ich in German, you have the We, the ich is just the subjectivity of yourself, and here you have the intercultural sort of womb out of which the, the, the eye grows. It's like um, your family, your language, your cultural background where you're, gro where you're grown up, the geography, and so on. And you have a reflection of that always in the outside, to the right side. You have uh, what you are doing. You are it's like somebody comes towards you and you can see him from far away and you know, oh, this is Peter or this is Georgia or whoever, because the way he walks you can see in the bodily behavior, that's him. So there is a gestalt, there is a form that is recognizable and that is changing but recognizable. And you have also a, trans, sort of a, a transformation of this cultural source of religion, of art, <coughs> of science into an objectivity uh, that is law, that is medicine, uh, that is courts, that is social behavior, and so on. So we have a reflection of the invisible towards the visible visibility all the time. Um, and that sort of brings you into, now it suddenly becomes complex, very complex because it's a spiral as Wilbur sees it and probably Obey also from very sort of archaic starting points in the human development through magical levels, through sort of uh, ethnical levels, through mythic orders as he said, through a scientific rational uh, uh, level into a pluralistic where we are now and then he says 
in the integral world, you first time understand that all these sort of layers of consciousness, which are not only layers of consciousness, but on the other side here are sort of clans, tribes, empires, nations, corporate states, value communities, and so on, holistic uh, meshwork. They are sort of real, these, these awarenesses are realizing themselves in matter and in, in, very, in, in very sort of crucial forms. A clan is a form, ethnic tribes is a form, and so on. Each with his, with his special value systems, each with his special orders of understanding. And like in a city now in San Francisco, you can see that we have a very advanced communities who are really lying on, on authentic value systems, which Ube also sort of was concerned of. And on the other hand, we have also uh, people who are strictly thinking in clan systems, sorry, in sort of blood relationships, my family, I have to defend them, and so on. My God, a fundamentalistic view of my God, instead of there are many kind of gods. And so far, he said, the, the illusion of consciousness is always to overcome these levels, which we're all going through, understanding their values but over transcending them into a, a broadened understanding of a universalist um, view on everything. So you are at the same time always here and at the same time maybe already here. And to understand the gradual sort of flowing into each other is the first integral looking at the world from a point of a humanistic transpersonal understanding that values are floating, that values are sort of uh, new values bring completely new ideas of what the world is like, which is then a value system here of a corporate state, for example, is a completely different thing than a value system of an ecological thinking, for example. <coughs> so this is what uh, we will call the continuous evolution as a tetra evolution for quadrants going on all the time. And we have it the same way through science uh, also. Just let me finish with two quotes. Weber says, there is no end to enlightenment. What he was calling for was a second enlightenment, a second enlightenment in so far as we had in the Western world our first enlightenment, sort of uh, taking us a jump into, away from a fundamentalist religious outlook into a scientific outlook. And nowadays to connect again both without sort of mixing them in the wrong way, in the wrong way, meaning Religion has its own laws of development as science has its own laws of development. But both, in a way, through art, for example, have a creative potential of connecting. Art is the bridge between these two powers of science and of religion. That was very clear to him. But to see the point of, con of connection, you have to be clear from which eye you see. Oh, is it the eye of the mind, or is it, that means philosophy? Is it the eye of the flesh, meaning science, or is it the eye of the spirit, meaning meditation, for example? So, in so far, he said, the integral view is the first time understanding not only of a global community, but of that mankind that is, as Ube said it, coming from the, from, sort of from the first stars that were exploding in the universe and of which we are a part. To finish it up, no ecology, for example, can be replaced by a, by a primitive technology as highly as it may have been developed in our eyes. 
an ecology which is not a spiritual ecology, meaning to understand this connectedness and these changes of connection through the different states of awareness uh, is what is needed and is the hardest thing because you cannot make money out of that, you cannot make power of that. You only have this deep understanding and staunen, astonishment that the mystery is going on while we are exploring it and in so far the self as of what he is speaking which is probably more an artistic self than just a scientific self is the always the one who is the witness of it and who sort of is is merging this witness this this uh, being a witness with what he sees all the time so the seer as the witness and what is seen is sort of coincide and glide into each other and that is where sort of art science are the focused on the spiritual and the deepest sense and essence of enlightenment which is an ongoing process and uh, this is what I found in Ube's pictures that he has understood that the star and the eye and the empty dark point within our eyes are all us at the same moment looking into inner, in, even more inner universes which sort of materialize outside. Thank you very much. <laughs>